the morning. Top of the morning to you. Top of the morning to you. Top of the morning to you. Good morning, beautiful people. Good morning. Good morning. Dear business owner is back. It's Monday, and I know y'all lost an hour, so y'all mad. Y'all hot around the collar right now. Give everybody a chance to come in the room. Let's go. Let's get it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, beautiful people. Good morning. How goes it? How goes it? The weekend is over. It's time to get back to work, people. Time to get back to work. J-O-B. Some of y'all heading on to work now, right? How goes it? Tap the screen. Share. Dwayne will be here in a second. He will be here in a second. Do, do, do. Give y'all a chance to get in, get your coffee. Get your pen and pad. Yes, coffee first. Yes, Jackie, get the coffee first. Cannot miss the coffee. I sure got mine. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, today we're going to talk about the one-week marketing plan. Give y'all a skinny on it. Y'all ain't getting all the nuggets and details, but you're going to get the skinny on it. Mm-hmm. Tea? All right. What kind of tea you drinking? I'm a tea person, too. I likes tea. Nothing wrong with tea. Tea is good. What's up, four sexy chicks? How goes it? Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. What's up, what's up? How goes it, y'all? Let's go. Mm, 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 mm. All right. All right, all right, all right. Yes, this week. Excited about it. I, I'm excited about our collaboration. Definitely excited about that. I'm going to introduce y'all to a topic today that is going to be one of my paid courses coming soon. Developing your one week marketing plan. Teach people how to create a marketing plan for a week. Got to last a week. So some of the content I'm going to give you all today may be a little vague because I can't give you all the paid information that I'm going to give to people. That's my man. There you go. Send the invitation. Da, 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 da. Let's go, let's go. What's up, dude? Mr. Williams, what's happening? Man, another day in paradise, brother. Cool. Jackie says the day. What's the day away, Jackie? Uh, members only class tomorrow. Oh, yeah. That you're, that you're speaking at. Yeah. Jackie know that information. Why my screen look jacked up? Had to cheer for Dwayne coming in. Let's go. 
let's see, let's see. Ooh, I'm about to put a question on there. Okay. You gonna like this question. <laughs> Hey, Crystal. About to put a poll up here, people, for y'all to vote. Let's see. About to put a poll up for y'all to vote. Yeah, poll for you to vote. Now for y'all to slide on. Make sure I ain't got nothing crazy written on there, I guess. Let's see. Why well, can't you see the comments? What's going on with this thing? Hey, Keisha. Thank you. Okay, I'm going. That's exactly what's happening. So, I made a post this morning. Oh, yeah? You know what? Yeah. I've had so many people ask, well, so many people in passing make a comment like, man, y'all finally got it done, man. There's a lot of people that didn't think y'all was going to make it. I never get to know who's the a lot of people, right? Or, man, where did y'all get the money to build that building? Or, you know, why you did it in St. Martinville? And it's like, the interesting part is, I mean, we've even had people that came to the building, literally on two and three separate occasions, like they were getting married. They ended up opening their own venue. And my thing is, why disguise yourself as a person who's wanting to get married? Just say that you're opening a wedding venue. You don't think that we would help you? You don't think that we would, we could talk about potential, you know, sharing contractors, sharing electricians, sharing plumbers. It's like, we are so stuck as business owners in this idea that we can't go to act, you know, to get advice from other business owners who've been doing it for a long time you know and the it's the just, problem is just unfortunate the the problem is new new age business ownership doing when we think business a long time ago we used to think about getting a building getting an office space getting a storefront with the, it took it, it so it meant that only people who would save up their money and get their funds together could actually do that we're in an era in which business owners start a lot of business from home. So that's the norm. We're going to start at home. We're going to do it at home. We're going to do it part time. And when somebody decides to do a business the old fashioned way, which like getting a brick and mortar, uh, having a, a venue, um, getting an office space, that is a strange beast to people nowadays. Because most people are not ready for this word budgeted to expand their business to where it's visible in the in the public so when they see somebody like yourself saying i'm going to have a tangible business that's a who i don't know if that's gonna work yeah <laughs> especially in our culture nowadays you know what people would have believed it if you was opening a restaurant but that's the only type of business that makes sense that you're opening with a building all you candle makers and cookie bakers, y'all should get a building. Yes, your house is not sufficient. I'm sorry, it's just not. 
it's and, and, and it's just it's just kind of one of those things where it's like why does everything have to be addressed from a negative combative failure perspective it's like our minds have become so conditioned with lack like it's like we can't even see past that we can't even see past that hey you do know that if you commit to something for two years chances are it's going to pay off but that requires risk going the same that, amount of risk that it requires us to get in the car, drive to the store, hoping that we make it back on time. Exactly. The same kind of risk you have by buying a brand new house, thinking that your nine to five is going to keep you hired. It, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. It, it's, that's actually a really good one. It's and, all I, and I say that because I know people right now, sincerely, who purchased a home in less than two years and they already... Like something happened with the job. Yes, so like, and, and 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 I think that's the thing. That I think that is probably where if I just really dug deep into a lot of where the core is coming from, it's because I know life happens. I've had life happen. So why not put yourself in position to where you at least in the driver's seat? I know the answer to that. Because the hard truth that people need to swallow is most of y'all don't trust yourself. You I trust your boss. Watch this. You trust your boss vision for your life more than you trust your own. Uh. <laughs> Ouch. We don't, we, don't, we don't have enough belief in our abilities. So we trust... We, we like to do what I call divert responsibilities, right? You know why we have a job most of the time? Some of y'all are supposed to be business owners. You know why you got a job, though? Because you don't trust your own abilities. They you, die. You, rather, you rather be able to say that I didn't make it because it's my boss' fault. He didn't pay me enough. Yeah. He didn't pay me enough. Yeah. They didn't give yeah. me enough hours. They won't promote me. We like complaining. We like being in a negative mindset. They didn't want to hire a black. They didn't want to, they didn't want to promote a black person. Is the reason that most women, not all, <laughs> go to the hospital for their deliver their baby. And they don't want to be look, that, that couple don't want to be home and deliver the baby like the old school days, back in the days when you did male wife. And for those that question it, yes, I deliver my own, my last two daughters myself. At house. Now at let me house. say something. Can I and, and I'm gonna say something? This is gonna step on toes, and I don't mean for it to step on toes. If you, if you listen to it with an open mind, you're not gonna feel, you know, like if your toes are stepping on. You know the hardest people, the, 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 the hardest people, well, let me say this here. People who have the hardest time finding a job are single mothers. Because now you have to find a job that's willing to accept that you're a single mother. There's times when you're not going to be able to pick up, you're not going to be able to make it to work because, you know, little Johnny's sick, you know, and things of that nature. And what happens is you're going into that job wanting equal treatment, but you'll never be treated equally by virtue of just you, by, by virtue of your life circumstances. And it's unfortunate, but it's real because now you're asking the job not only to do what they're supposed to do, which is pay you for the hours work, but you're asking them to be concerned about your personal life. And whenever you're indirectly wanting a job to be concerned about who you are as a person and what you have going on, you lose perspective. Mm -hmm. The only thing that a job owes you is pay for the time work. They don't owe you feelings. They don't owe you uh, empathy. They don't owe you none of that. They only owe you a check for the hours work. It's no happy employee day because ultimately that job wants to make money. Having said that, we would depend on that very job that doesn't care about us and what we are going through to somehow miraculously, you know, when we get in a bind, hey man, let me get an advance on my check. Probably not. Versus creating your own source of income. And then now 
your lifestyle is dependent upon you putting effort into your thing. And wouldn't it be, I guess, a bit more gratifying to know that if I put in the time and the effort, then my business can be built in a way where I can be a single mother and not have to have my life inter in intervene. Am I making sense? Plenty of sense. You know, I've, I've always said this, Dwayne. I have yet to meet any owner of a business in any capacity. Said, I'm starting a business because I want to make other people's life better. That's, that's not the reason they started the business. They, they started the business because they want to make their life better. It's their vision and their dream to improve their life, to solve a problem, to move a cause forward. That's why they started the business. Now, in order to do that, they recognize that I need people to help me. So help me with my dream is what these the owner of a business is. Anybody that you bring aboard is just helping you with your dream. See, the reality of that happened when I was working Good morning, Matt. When I was working in, in, in the car business and this this multimillionaire, we spent about 45 minutes just talking and shooting the breeze. And it says, how long are you going to help your boss with his dream instead of building your own? Uh, That's what triggered me to go entrepreneurship was that question. And it was like, he said, yeah, he said, as skilled as you are, say all that talent, you're helping him build his dream. What about yours? Do you have a dream? And how much and, time and, are you dedicating to it? And, and I was like, <laughs> and, 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 but it's true though. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I want people to just realize this, right? It don't matter who you are. It don't matter what your skill set is. Like, cause this isn't a, uh, a conversation about skill set. This is a conversation simply about your ability to give time to what it is that you're building. Mm -hmm. I don't care what your eight, 10, 15 hours look like, because everybody's eight, 10, 15 hours a day maybe look different, but it doesn't change the fact that we all get the same eight, 10, 15, 20 hours, 24 hours, whatever, whatever number you want to come up with. The more that you don't catch this concept, the further from being where you want to be, you are. I don't care what your life looks like. Whenever you give 40 hours of those, that life, 50 hours of that life to somebody else's dream, you're taken away from yours. <clears throat> Period. You can't buy back that time. You can't get it on layaway. You can't get it on, you know, half price. If I go give 50 hours to AT&T, I can't possibly use those same 50 hours in my life. All right, Dwayne, I'm gonna shift my topic this morning. See, you yeah. didn't you didn't inspire me to talk about this. I ain't talked about it in a while. I've talked about it before. Okay, so every single day, every one of us gets the same 86,400 seconds. The difference between fa failure and success is how well you budgeted those seconds. Uh, now, if you think about it as money, it's $86,400 every single day. The question is, how do you intend to do it? If you did not budget your time, then you're going to blow through it. How much of, how much of that $86,400 a day is allocated towards funding your future versus how much is being blown through and wasted on fast food. In other words, what I mean is useless conversations. DoorDash. <laughs> yeah, door dashing it, right? We got, there's fees that, you know, there's, there's, and then if you didn't structure your day right, if you don't use a calendar, then, you know, you just, you know, it's kind of like a $20 bill. Once you break it, it's gone. I don't care if you spent $5 of it. It's like you, when you break a 20, it's like, where's the rest of it? It just disappears for some reason, right? <clears throat> and it's not until 
you hit a breaking point that you start valuing your 86,400 seconds in a day mm-hmm. until you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. <laughs> and in order to, let me tell you this, in order to maximize your 86,400 seconds every day, I'm going to just tell you the real is you're going to piss some people off because you can't accommodate everybody. You're going to have to spend it doing things that other people don't have the discipline to do. You're going to have to dedicate it towards learning and growing. Now, if you can learn to manage your 86,400 seconds a day effectively, what most people have to have the harsh reality is that time is money and money is time. How you spend your time is also how you spend your money. Wait, how you spend your time is also how you spend your money. Let's talk about that for just a second. <laughs> how you spend your time is how you spend your money. Is it safe to say that if a person doesn't spend their time investing in their business, clearly they don't invest their money investing in their business? Is that a fair statement? Mm-hmm. So if you as a business owner are not where you want to be, can that be attributed to you're not investing into where you want to be? Yeah. So it still comes back to accountability. It still comes Always. back to, we, 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 we can't blame no one else for why we are not where we need to be. Right. Cause we don't, we, we don't have a conscious choice. We don't because we don't we don't think to maximize what we have. We think so sometimes I think we think that give me more is going to position me to where I need to be. And really is can I manage what I have already first? And most people are bad managers. We're not good. A lot of time we're not good stewards of our time. We're not good stewards of our money. We're not good stewards of our emotions. We, 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 we haven't, we haven't, it takes discipline to, to be a good steward of anything. It is not about how many yeses you can give is how many no's can you issue out when you're in the position to say yes. Okay. So that's a deeper question. <laughs> do you agree with the idea that you know how we say we, we try to break generational curses right mm-hmm. do you agree with the idea that <laughs> that the reason that we're somehow stuck in this trance of being unable to move forward is because of what our parents and grandparents did I think so I, I think I think sometimes in the past People have um, shared the condition and the problem, but they 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 haven't shared the solution. Okay. So, so I, I, can I challenge that? Yeah. I know my parents. Hell, I was on my own at seventeen. So I know my parents didn't have everything all together. I had to make a conscious choice. I can follow that model or I cannot. Repetition deepens the impression. So if you're constantly having somebody tell you that you can't, you can't, you can't, then you won't. But if you constantly put yourself around people who's telling you that you can, chances are you will. Mm -hmm. As an adult, we get to make our own decisions. Hell, we we, we can't wait till we get 21 so we can go just buy alcohol just because we can. We can't wait till we, you know, we're legal to buy something just because we can. And that same drive and motivation to do the first to do things the first time because we are le- we are legally able to do it. Why not 
make that make same, that same conscious, conscious effort to change your life. Why are people are conditioned. To suffer? Okay. okay. People are conditioned. It's just like you said, repetition, right? Once you, once you've been in, 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 raised in a certain environment, the average person is going to be conditioned to do certain things. Is that at a point once you've done something enough, you can be in the mindset to automatically gravitate towards something. Some of the preferences that people have is based on the environment that was raised in. Okay. okay. So they're going to do it. So it takes, it takes, there are some people who can break past their conditions and their conditioning. And there's those who we're designed or we're destined to help people break out of. It's, it's kind of like a disease, right? If you, if you are, if your parent was an alcoholic or an addict okay, and you're born under that umbrella, it's automatically in that, that child. Okay. Okay. It's been proven. So you have to, you have to, you have to take a therapeutic approach to help them get out of that. Uh, okay. Okay. I, I like the perspective and I, and I even like that. I even like that thought. So, so going back to the original question or going back to that whole idea, what would your solution be to breaking said generational curse? Woof, boy, look, that's a tough one. Let me tell you why it's tough because it, it's the same answer that a lot of teachers in the education system has learned, right? You have different tolerances. For those of us that have broken out of it, we have an obligation and responsibility or an opportunity to reach back and help those that are conditioned and stuck. The ones you choose to help depends on your patience level. Some people, okay. they're going to wash, rinse, and repeat those bad habits and then look, the reality is, ain't no helping them people. Now, does that mean that there's not a group of people that want to help them? Yep, there's some people that want to help them. Um, but just like the education system, many teachers have gotten to the point where they said, I can't help these eighth graders. They're too far gone. I would rather help the kindergartners because they're fresh. So if we look at the business world, who do you want to help? The person that's thinking about starting a business? The one who's just starting or the one who's mm. been doing it and has already developed the bad habits and feel like they're okay. So can I be vulnerable and honest? Mm -hmm. I can remember vividly because I said it so often, vulnerable moment, y'all. I want to help people change from an LLC to a corporation. And if I'm honest from a vulnerable space, those are the clients that require the most attention. Because you're going to take them on an unknown journey. Because it's an unknown path. It's, it's, it's literally breaking the entirety of what they've ever thought about being a business owner. And that becomes emotionally taxing because the desire is to help them cross over. What I battle is they're constantly, even if they don't think they're challenging, they're challenging, <laughs> right? They're challenging, right? Yeah. And it, it's, it's a difference between asking a question for understanding, but asking a question from a place that you don't agree. But you're, you're not agreeing because mentally you've been conditioned to think of this a certain way. Hence why we always get comments about this is not right, that's not right. So from the, what I found is people who are just starting out, I can almost process them faster. Yeah, you're, 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 you're a thousand percent correct. So. Oftentimes you find people who disagree without reasoning. It just, it didn't feel good. It didn't sound good. It's not what I'm used to hearing. So I just, they automatically disagree. Yeah. yeah. Versus I'm I, all I ask with people, like I love getting into the conversation. I don't like to get in an argument, but I like to get in debates. 
Let's go back and forth, right? If you don't agree with my statement, tell me what part of my statement you didn't agree with and why. Okay, okay, boy, well, I don't know why you just connected a dot for me just now, but I think that's it. I'm okay with the challenge. I'm not okay with you challenging because somebody else told you. So you don't even believe in why right. you're challenging. Right. You're basically challenging because of what someone else told you and not what you believe fundamentally. Right. Somebody said that's wrong. Well, what's wrong? How, how so? And here it is. If I can put the, the evidence in front of you, yeah. that's, you know, that's overcoming the objection. If I could put the evidence in front of you, would you change your position? And a lot of times before I get into any serious debate with somebody, I ask them. Are you open to changing your disposition? If not, we don't need to talk. Because I'm open to okay. changing mine. If you present evidence to me that makes sense, then I'm going to have to shift what I believe. So oh, at that man. moment, boy, this is, boy, I, I think this live is for me. <laughs> at that moment, if we're honest, I think that's where we start to define your target, target audience. audience. Mm -hmm. Here's why I say that. You don't believe you need a website. I give you solid, tangible proof on why you need one. Your target customer is the one who accepts it. But the one you spend your time with is the one who doesn't accept it. Mm -hmm. And that's where you become tired, you become frustrated, you become annoyed, you become irritated, you become short. Because you're spending a lot of energy on the people who just don't get it versus spending your time on the people who, man, you showed it to me. Look. Hell, I believe it. And I'm not. Dwayne, I found on that topic, you know the the main reason people don't get a website? Because well, I can give you an answer. What, what, what's your answer? I think people don't get a website because they don't see the value. They don't see how having a website makes them money. I'm going to tell you. Yeah, that's that's true. But it's for the same reason they don't get a, a building. For their business. <laughs> because it's not easy. It requires you to learn something new. Okay, okay. It requires okay. a skill. You know, you have to, it requires more effort than you're willing to give because we think the business, watch this. People have start to, people create a business for the same reason sometimes they have a child. It's just to appease their inner needs. It's not to solve a problem. It's not to develop legacy. It's not to build something constructive. That's not why they're doing it. You know why? Because you need a baby doll. That's why you had a child. So you so. want to prove you want to prove you want to prove your masculinity is why you had a child. So you get a business just to say I'm a business owner, not because you really want to delve into the workload and develop it into the biggest, baddest thing you can make it because you want to solve a community problem because you want to impact. Well, that's not why people starting businesses. They're starting business because of a little extra large on. Listen. And it's <laughs> And, I, and because of privacy, I can't show it. But I, I, what we're talking about right now is it's almost like validation, confirmation in a lot. If I tell you right now, Cliff, and I'm not, this is not going to be an LLC conversation. Just, just follow, the, just just follow, follow along. But if I tell you right now, 98% of business owners shouldn't have an EIN number. Pay attention. <laughs> What's the first thing that comes to your mind when that statement is made? What they said. Everybody else got okay. one. Okay, great. So then, when I show you, hey, you need one if you answer yes to all of these questions, do you know the number one response I get after I show that video? I guess it'll be a challenging response. Well, the bank said I need one. That is the number one response. And here is where in my brain, I'm like, wait a minute. 
you had to go get it from the IRS. Is the bank, does the bank supersede the IRS? On the, on the business checklist, the last I remember seeing, even with the Small Business Administration, it said that you go to the bank to open up a bank account, not to get business advice. Oh, I wasn't supposed to say that. I'm sorry. So what it, what it boils down to is, let's just call it what it is. Yes, the, they, they reveal yeah. thoughts and beliefs. And you know what it also reveals? People will do what the hell they want to. You, you know, this is the same group of people that go to their doctor for advice. And the doctor tells them what they should do. And they walk out and do the total opposite. <laughs> This is the same group of people that go to a fitness trainer and they tell them what they should do and they do the total opposite. <laughs> this is the same group of people that go to the nutritionists and dietitians and tell them what they need to eat and they do the total opposite. This, this is the same group of people that went to school and got in education and walked away and didn't use it. So, so you know, it goes back to the thoughts and the beliefs. That's and the, it. I think for me, that's probably the question that I can't. What do you believe? At least tell me what you believe, Dwayne, not what you heard. Let me. I'm gonna give you the blueprint of my personal development training that I do with people. I tell them, I'm not gonna dive into the six dimensions I cover, but I talk about this: thought, action, habit, character, destiny. Okay. When I see where you're at in life, I do it, I backtrack, right? It starts with how you think. How you think acted upon is your actions. Actions that are taken repeatedly becomes habits. Habits that are manifested display character. Characters end up in a certain destiny every time. In order to change your destination, I first have to change the thought because if I don't, all the rest of the stuff falls in alignment, right? Now, what do I mean? Watch this. Now, this goes back to the comment you made to begin with, right? So one day you was tempted as a kid, teenager, somebody smoked a cigarette. The thought was, I should smoke. I shouldn't smoke. It's popular. It's not popular. If I smoke, I'm not going to get cancer. I will. And then one day you took action. You said, I'm going to smoke. Now, <laughs> the problem with the action is if it does not have an immediate negative consequence, we will repeat it. Yeah. If it has pleasure attached to it, we're going to lock it in. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you smoked and you got a little buzz, like, oh, it's not that bad. You forgot about cancer. You forgot about habit. You forgot about the impact of the income. You forgot about that. So you continue to do it. And eventually you became what's what the person who smoke, however often you do it. And then one day you fill out a form and it asks you about your character. It said, are you a smoker? <laughs> ER means this is what you do repeatedly as a habit, right? <laughs> so then <laughs> your character, you're listed as a smoker. So mm -hmm. now what happens? That's the destination for smokers. Yes, there's anomalies who get past it, but most of the time you get emphysema, you get bad breath, you get yellow teeth, you get cancer, you get all of those things that's attached to the destination of a smoker. You, you also get a higher insurance premium. You get higher, you know, th this is what this is attached to. Wow. So the question wow. is, now you're stuck smoking. How can I change you from being a smoker to someone who doesn't? I have to change your thought. I have to get you to believe that it's bad for your health. I have to get you to believe that's messing up your breath. I have to get you to believe that cancer is gonna come if you keep doing. I have to get you to believe. If I cannot get you to believe the negative of that action, you won't stop doing it. Because I cycle. need that thought for you to think. Pop in your head every time you get tempted again. The action you want to do that. I, I, I don't want. I don't want those outcomes. So when you don't want a certain outcome, it's when you will change your action. So I got to change your thinking. So you're presenting all the information, all the evidence. For people, you should change from LLC to corporation. But you know what? The actions 
have not been severe enough for people to change their belief. Damn. That was actually an amazing analogy, by the way. That was an amazing analogy. Thank you, sir. So the overall goal should be how do we change people's thought process? That's that. That's exactly right. That's all we can ever do is those of us that are curse breakers, we have to change how you perceive your your situation or your condition so that they can take a different course of action than the one they've been taking. And you said something really, really great. So let me go ahead and put this out here, y'all. What most people don't know is I have a, an ebook on how to build business credit. You know what King told me? Why are you going to put that out? <laughs> like, we don't read now. So then I say, well, it's cheaper if I just give them a book versus me doing it for them. You know what he told me? And I swear, he told me this at 7 30 this morning. He said, <laughs> <laughs> just offer to do it at a lower price now my brain is telling me that I've already reduced the price but he's challenging me to even go further just reduce it because it doesn't matter that I have an ebook for it we don't read hell we know we, we clearly see that right so as a service-based consultant what we do is we provide a service. But even when we are providing services, it doesn't matter how great the service is. If I'm providing service for somebody whose thought process hasn't changed, then it becomes, well, why is it taking so long? Mm -hmm. I spent this, why is it taking so long? Versus, man, I see the benefit of this helping me. Let me let the process take its natural course. That's why the first step in my process for what I do is coaching. Hmm. I, it, the mind, yeah, I have to, in order for my clients to have a healthy respect for my, for what I'm going to do for them, I have to get in that head. I have to get in your mind to get you to understand what I understand. Other than that, you have people with unrealistic expectations trying to expedite a process that shouldn't be expedited. In other words, if we're gonna bake a cake, the amount of time that's on the box is the time you're supposed to follow. <laughs> you take your cake out 10 minutes early and see. Okay, nope. so this brings me to yesterday, right? So I had a situation where, let me see how can I explain this del delicately. I had a situation with a client that for whatever reason, whatever length of time it took, it required a face-to-face -face yesterday on a Sunday. So I go meet the client and immediately when I get there, they bring the whole posse with them. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, no, not one of them. <laughs> they bring everybody. As if the narrative was going to change. I get it, though. You know what I'm saying? But they bring everybody there because everybody has a question. And the basis of the conversation, why is it taking so long? We paid you all for a service for taxes. Why is it taking so long? We sent you all emails. We didn't get a response. Why is it taking so long? Now, pay attention, King. Pay attention. <laughs> Let me see if you catch something. So I stated, well, we sent an email with a list of questions that we need an answer as it relates to your finances. They responded back saying, well, we sent you an email asking where you want us to send our responses. I 
I sent an email <laughs> stating <laughs> I need the responses, right? But then they said they, they sent an email asking where to send the responses. I said, okay. And I said, let's get to the real issue. <laughs> Thank you, Boosie. <laughs> that was my thought, right? But again, let's just go with they were unclear. They were unsure, you know. As, as, um, as so many times, yeah. <laughs> let's just go with that. When I finally realized, and again, this is the game. This is the game. They each asking questions. It was a common theme in the in the questions, in the line of questioning, and it was we need to close 2023 books. We need these taxes filed. I said, okay. I say, so is the goal to file the taxes or is the goal to file the taxes accurately? It was silence at the table. They said, what do you mean? I said, no, seriously, is the goal to file the taxes for the sake of filing the taxes or is the goal to file them accurately. Now watch, watch this. This is because now I, I already know how the answer is gonna be. This is like, well, no. We want them filed right. I said, I said oh, okay. okay. I said, I said let me bring you back to the first conversation we had. You said that you didn't want to owe the IRS. Do you agree? Yes. So if I file them accurately, you owe the IRS. Oh. Silence. So what do we do? <laughs> I said, do you I remember said, those questions that I asked? I need those answers. I said, because my job is to help reduce your tax liability. You came to me with a problem. My job is to make sure that we do things in an order. So if I'm going to go back and amend your tax return as a corporation, I need that Secretary of State to recognize that you're a corporation and I need to go back and amend the other couple years before I do this year. I said, so what you're asking me for is unrealistic. You're asking me to do something that is contradictory to what your desired outcome is be, would be. And I'm saying all that to say, people's expectations are totally different from their reality in most cases. What did you get out of that? That you have people who are not educated in the process of filing taxes that are trying to tell the expert how they should do it and how <laughs> it should happen. That's what, that's what I got out of that. Yeah, I, I got that in the middle of surgery, the patient woke up and told the surgeon, hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, look, people tell me I'm very direct, but it's like that if I don't know something, I, I need I, I want the expert to just tell me what's happening, and I don't feel the need to rush the process of a result that you know. If, if, most of the time, if I'm going to you, that means that I'm I'm handing over to you as the expert. And when okay, can I give a better example? When I went to get my consultation with the neurosurgeon, I didn't tell him, "Look, I need the surgery to happen in three hours." I didn't say that. I said, "What needs to happen? What are my options?" And he told me, "On average, it takes this amount of time." I didn't let that create anxiety in me for how fast I wanted to get out. I didn't. I just let, I had to let things happen because I wanted it to be done correct. What I know is this quality takes time, usually more time than your anxiety wants you to have. And I think that's it right there. I, I, there so A, budget becomes an issue because A, people don't know the cost of things, right? So they, they, you know, we all think that we can do something for cheaper. We know that. You know how we move, right? Man, he, the mechanic charging that much? Shit, I'm gonna go change my own, my own oil. You know what I'm saying? You know how we do, right? Um, That's my other one. And then the time that it takes 
I can do it myself faster. And in between the cost and the time, the one thing, see, look, cost, time, but look at the middle. As a V, that's called value. We don't understand the value. See, because there's no tangible, there's nothing tangible in this, this space here. Yeah. So because there's no tangibility here, we tend to dismiss it. But the reality is this is the most important space, the value. Yeah, it, it is. And, 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 and that's where I'm, I'm, I've, I've learned to ask a, a question, very valuable question to people is, do you, do you want quantity or quality? And, 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 and they come at different price rates. Right. Like, for example, when I do logos, I now have it where you can get a trademarkable logo. Or an untrademarkable logo. Two different price points. Trademarkable logo. You know what I'll do? I'm going to tell you how that works. The one I might sit down for a week and don't even scratch nothing on the paper. Oh, I, if, trust me. If, I do. It's all in my head It's rolling around. I'm looking for inspiration. I'm putting thought into it. And then it hit me out of the blue, boom. And then I go to work. I can go from zero to 100 that quick when it comes to a trademarkable logo and I want a unique originality and a research and I get ideas. Or if you're in a hurry, I can do an untrademarkable logo. You know what that means? I just look to see what's out there, grab some shapes off of Canva, throw them together, and I still make it look good but it don't take as much effort and you can't trademark it. So it's got a lower quality and I can get it to you quick in the lowest yeah, form yeah. and file format. And boy, I tell you, boy, one day y'all gonna stop eating microwave dinners. Y'all gonna sit there and have y'all a good cooked meal. They're, they're getting things rapid. <laughs> getting things, <laughs> yes. Getting things Man. rapid is the first way to enter in toxicity inside of your mind. Yeah, I agree. Expecting everything fast, everything quick, everything in a hurry. And we're in a generation, we're in a place where people like the microwave and we despise the oven. We don't like the oven anymore. The <laughs> oven is you, the saving grace. And, 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 you know, for me, it's so, so I know it seems like we're all over the place, but what, what we're really talking about is, is simple. I never, ever, ever get tired of working on my business. Do you know how many times I call this man and I, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly looking to refine processes. I'm constantly looking. Mm hmm you know, it's, it's, and thank you, Jackie, your business is like birth. And we all know everybody has a different way of parenting and raising their children. We get it. But if we look at it from a fundamental perspective, we all want our children to grow up and be the best that they can be. Well, if I want my child to be the best that they can be, I have to give my child an opportunity to be the best best that they could be. What I'm saying by that is whenever you treat that business as a person, then, or oh, it's like a baby rather, you got some parents, shit, that baby can't even walk and the baby got Jordans. That baby can't even talk and that baby got the best of everything. You have other parents, shit, the baby gonna change his own diaper. And just look, just take those two analogies and, and what happens in life. So if you look at your business that way, it's the same way. And you, and you, and you do yourself a justice by not comparing your baby to somebody else's baby. Again, how you want your child to be? How do you want your child to be raised, that's your that's your business. So as creative as you are, they're not original in the way that it's done. Yeah. 
<laughs> Man, look, I don't want to get off of this live. You had a whole topic that I wanted you to touch this morning. I ain't gonna lie. We didn't got way off an hour. Oh, yeah. Well, it was I a really good wanted topic. you to touch that. We're talking about breaking curses. I mean, that's it. I love the topic. Is 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 because the is the curse of our thinking that's really the curse. When we say the curse, it ain't really some tangible problem we have. It's more of a a, a a thought problem that we have. How we see things, how we, you know, not until you see things in its proper perspective can you make a change. That's all change is. Is is seeing things in its proper like perspective. Sometimes we we're looking at things from the wrong angle. You know what? I like how you said that. I'm ask. I'm a, I, we asked this question on Friday, but I'm gonna ask it again because I think it's fitting. Whenever you're thinking about business, right? Do you think about the money that it will cost you, or do you think about the money that you're investing? Which way are you looking at it? And if we tell the truth and shame the devil, you know how we say that. We <laughs> always we always look at what it's costing us. And anytime that we are looking at things from a cost perspective, then we go looking at our wallet. We go look at our bank account. And in, in our brains, we can't afford it. Neither but if you're investing, then you look at it. You find... If you look at your business from an investment perspective, you will literally see a quarter or a dollar bill rather, and you're gonna be like, man, that dollar bill is gonna turn into something. I'm gonna get that back. But if you look at it from a cost perspective, I'm losing. Nithya said exactly what I was about to say. That until your mind doesn't, your mind has to be reprogrammed into believing that you're investing in your business, not spending money on it. And, and Ms. Deborah, can I use you as an example? Before I even say something, and I'm not going to, I just want to just briefly, but Ms. Deborah, can I use you as an example? Just trust me, I ain't going to say nothing crazy. All right, thank you. Whew. All right, Ms. Deborah. Ms. Deborah came to us. She heard it, she knew she wants to do something different. Let me tell you what I liked about Ms. Deborah, and I'm going to just be, I'm going to just call it what it is. Ms. Deborah asks, how much does everything cost? Although Ms. Deborah knew at, in her mind what she could afford at the time, she wanted to know the whole cost. And what she did was, the way that I perceived it, she is taking it one week and two weeks at a time. What I mean by that is, how we and King was we're talking about. She took that entire journey and she said, you know what? I'm going to do this today. I'm going to mm -hmm. do this. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do this. And I swear, like clockwork, hell, she was on here asking, where's my invoice? Like, what she is doing is she's becoming intentional. And although she may have not been in a position to do it all at one time, she still said, you know what? When I get paid, I'm going to do this. When I get this, I'm going to do that. And, and clockwork, 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 clockwork. clockwork. Mm -hmm. and, I, and those are the type of business owners, like in all honesty, that does my heart justice. Like I don't mind working out something with because why? They're intentional about it. Her mindset already shifted. Like her mindset says, no, I need to do this and I need to set this up. And I'm going to do that. So, and here's the analogy. If we all get a paycheck at the end of the week and the paycheck is 500, we know that we blow the 500 on anything. If we just took $50, I'm just using this as an example. Hey, Cliff, Dwayne, man, I got $50. What can that, what can that, what can that get? You know what I'm saying? What could that what do can that this week? It's just a mindset, Joe. If if somebody wanted to just make the investment in their business journey, they can just start making payments and realize that at the point which they made enough payments, it kicks off a process. See, when people talk about payments, I'll do that. Let's say I I, I, I got to do something for a thousand dollars, and I need a fifty percent deposit. 
You keep paying me till we get to the 500 mark. Once I get to the 500 mark, then I'll start the project. That's up to you. But people don't think about how to. I like that T-shirt. How to creatively follow the mind that takes you out of the condition you was in. Yes. Free myself from prison when I realize the cell is made of thoughts. Absolutely. It's made of thoughts. I freed myself in prison when I realized the cell was made of my thoughts. Oh shit, that's yes. just that's dope. All right, guys, any questions that y'all have for us this morning? Before we roll out on y'all, tomorrow is our members is our tomorrow is the members only class. It starts at seven p.m. Members only class tomorrow seven p.m. Uh, we have a special treat for those that are going to uh, be a part of the class tomorrow because I have none other than <laughs> the man himself. Uh, he's going to be teaching exactly what y'all need to be in about that old branding and marketing. This is going to, tomorrow's going to be great. How do I restructure my LLC? Visit the website. Uh, you can visit my website um, and we can help you with that. And the website um, <laughs> doesn't come with a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> I like that kid. I'm a, you don't 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 have my brain start to thinking. I've been was supposed to start. I've been was supposed to have a few people help me with these shirts. I ain't had those yet. Uh, will it be recorded? Yes, ma'am. Every class is recorded. Every class. Any other questions? Thank you, 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 thank you. All right, King, what you got going on today, man? I got to do a technology implementation. I took a company. I went over there to the office space, looked at all the technology need. I ordered all of it, had it delivered at the office. So today we're going to go install smart monitors, new computers, laptops, um, tablets, all kind of stuff. We're going to do that today. Damn, man. That was a good project. Yep. So I'm doing that because I've revamped. This is a company I've actually uh, rebranded them and I'm, I'm getting them set up for the internal workings and we're doing a PR bill. I got, I'm getting them. I got my, uh, this is not our mutual team. client, is it? Huh? This is not our mutual client, is it? Mm-mm. Damn, New, cool. it's one of my big dogs. I've been working with them for a while. They're, they're a company that actually helps get small business loans for com uh, people Say in the less. local community. <laughs> <laughs> yep, they've been doing it for 40 years. Good job, man. Congratulations on that, brother. You know what my job is today? What you doing? Cleaning. That works. How to handle being a business owner when life situation is forcing you into it? Autism, I will tell you this from the way that I understand the question. Life will always be life. When you are connected to the business and you're not separated from the business, you're going to always find run into that situation. One of the biggest things that I want people to probably leave with is the person who started Walmart 
didn't start Walmart thinking that they had to be Walmart every day. They put systems and people in place to help them. If you can't afford to hire a person, find a company that can help you. This is the there's no there's no recipe for you being the only person being able to run your business by yourself and take care of life when life happens. It's no recipe for it. And that's the unfortunate truth. If I tell people half the stuff that I go through on a day-to-day -day basis, it'd be like, well, damn, what the hell? It's just life gonna always be life in. Yeah. So, bro. I mean, we, Dwayne, I think, I think we've lived enough life in front of people for them to realize that life be life. Mm -hmm. And we, we haven't stopped. We haven't stopped at all. I mean, damn, I went and had a whole brain surgery and came back in, in, in record time uh, because life does not stop. There's no such thing as take it easy. You got to keep pushing. Every day. If you want something bad enough, you push through the, through the challenges and you get it. Every day. That's all you have. You to know, do. and you know, my mom, my mom has a pacemaker, right? My mom flatlined last week. Her pacemaker wow. kicked in. And my brother brought her here this past weekend. So we can kind of go figure it out because she has to now go, whatever the case is. But the interesting part about that is literally had she not had a pacemaker last week would have been her last week. Mm -hmm. At that moment, it validated everything that I do in life. Nothing is going to stop life from lifing. If you don't set things up to make sure that you can actually leave your legacy, then you're going to become what most people have become, which was a living person who died and life still moved on without them. I could have mm. easily shut the office down and said, you know what, man, we're not doing nothing. I'll go check my mind. I don't think one customer would have cared. Not to say that, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, it's just, just got to keep moving, man. Yeah, no, right. No, no, no Dwayne, you ain't got to apologize for what you just said. That, that's <laughs> the fact. Let's not forget, I had a conversation with you. I had a brain surgery and, and I didn't hear nothing from anybody. I was not offended by it, but I didn't hear anything from anybody. You know, when it came to, you know, when you come back, you be like, you, you's okay? Well, there was nobody that's there while it's going on. You with your mom that it's it's a you thing. And, and to, the reality is we can't expect, when you have a business, you can't expect everybody. What you expect of people is probably not going to happen. Let's uh -huh. just say it like that. So you got to prepare your heart for it. It's the way it is. It's the way it's going to be. It ain't going to change. I don't care how apologetic people are. It's what's going to happen. Nature of the beast is called self-preservation. People are going to do the things that are most beneficial to them and them alone. That's why I keep it business with everybody, man, because at the end of the day, the minute you take it, make it personal, your expectations change. Go on. Done. The peace. And disappointment is the definition of disappointment is failed expectations. Mm. That part. That's it. All right, man, I'm going clean. All right, Smain. So I'm going clean. I'm going clean. Hey, by the way, I'm going now. This is now. This is me being it's petty this morning. So if you don't feel like hearing me be petty, you can drop off. But let me say this. Last Friday, we had, I'm going to show you all because I wrote it down. I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight people said it. They, had, they were ready to invest and they gave a number on how much it was that they could afford to invest in their business on Friday. You know, today, Monday, I ain't heard from that one person. What? Y'all. I got, I, I at least heard from two people and they started investing. 
But of all them people that said they were in the vest, they're not really ready. I had I had a team on standby, ready. I swear, I called I called the team that well, if I needed some stuff done over, thank you, thank you, thank you, done over the weekend. I had them on standby. I said, man, look, I had eight people. I just got off a live. I had eight people that said that they're ready. I want to make sure that we get them taken care of. Crickets. <laughs> thank God I wasn't hoping, you know what I'm saying? Thank God I wasn't dependent well, on, on on. Most people are just talk, bro. God. And I'm I'm used to that. I'm not offended by it, not mad. I'm people not are, most people are just talk. They just they it's just talk. <laughs> it's, it sounds good. It sounds it sounds like because you're in a room with a bunch of people. It it, it sounds good to say, yeah. You know, some people watch this in the audience are of you people. Like the, clapping? the person in the person in church when they got the, the, the call the, the call to altar the altar call, and they just tugging on them. They get up, save me, and then they go back to know what they're doing. You know, in the audience of a hundred people clapping, not everybody clapping is clapping because they appreciate you. Oh. Sometimes people are clapping for a simple reason that because everybody else is clapping. <laughs> Jackie. Jackie ready. Me and Jackie had a good time at our meeting. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Good deal, man. I'm gone. Oh, what am All I right cleaning? Then. What you cleaning? House. As necessary. Cleaning house. Some was frowning, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you, Jazz. Hey, Jazz, I ain't seen you in a minute. Hey, right, I ain't seen you in a minute, minute. You know, a testimony is designed to test people's mindset. Some people get up there and testify because they want applause. Some people get up there and tell the real truth. Well. There's a difference. Well. All right, I'm going. All right, y'all. We will be back Wednesday. Thank y'all much. If y'all ready, go to the websites and book us. If you need consultation, need coaching, whatever the case may be, we're here to help y'all. Bring your budget with you. Peace out. Peace.